Greetings. Today we're going to do a quick overview of Microfocus ESM field sets and filters. We'll talk a little bit about where to display and use the field sets and the filters in the ESM console. So we'll go ahead and talk really briefly from a field set perspective. Field sets are just named subsets of available data fields that are in ESM and in the ArcSight solution. For example, source and target and event name and event ID, for example. Uh, so there's a lot of different places where these field sets can help you focus a grid view, an event inspector, an active channel, or, or some other set of data that's being returned. With a field set, you can pick and choose which fields you want to see and in which order you want to see those fields that are returned. Secondly, on the filter side of things, there's a filter resource tree in the Navigator panel we'll talk about that is pre-populated with some typical event filters. Uh, and these are things that you can use to filter data in or out, either from the display of what's showing up in ArcSight or in the content. So for example, you might use a filter in an active channel to limit which fields come back, uh, which rows. It could be in smart connectors in terms of filtering, which data do you want to let through, and reports and rules. You can even have nested filters, so sets of filters one on top of the other, uh, filter out all IDS events, and filter out things that are high, for example. So a combination of those sorts of things. So we'll go ahead and use the ArcSight console to take a look at both of those things, field sets and filters. So for this first part of the example, we'll go ahead and talk about field sets. In this case, I have an ArcSight console for ArcSight ESM version 7.0. Um, I've got on the right-hand side a demo live active channel. Uh, so I had some demo events playing in. Uh, and in the center, you can see different columns, end time, the name of the event that came in, attacker username, target username. And so by default, this field set that's displaying, if I go over to the left-hand side, there's a field set called Demo Live. And Demo Live, in this navigation panel of field sets, there's a drop-down box right at the top where you can pick field sets, um, has these columns in this particular order for which this information is going to be displayed. Now, say for example, I wanted to focus in more on um, network-based kind of information like attacker and target address, for example. Well, down in this list of field sets, I can right-click on one called firewall alerts, as an example, and then I can pick the option to set the firewall events as the current field set. And in the center, what's going to happen is the fields that display now change. I've got attacker address name, attacker port, for example, target address, target port. So all network focused information. And so each of these field sets, we've got a whole list of predefined ones underneath that field set drop down. Uh, if for example, you're typically more focused on user related activity, maybe if it was a Windows based event, I can go ahead and right click on Windows alerts, pick set as current field set. And what you'll see is the activity now changed to have more of a user focus and more of a categorization focus, category behavior, category outcome, for example. And then over on the right, things like attacker username, things that'll be more common in an operating system uh, display. So with field sets, you can pick and choose which fields you want to display from all the different fields that are available in the events that we collect. And you can pick and choose the order in which those display. And finally, over on the right hand side, I'm going to click on the attributes tab under this expect panel. So for demo live for that active channel, right in that first little subsection, you can see where I've got Demo Live selected. So anytime I bring up that active channel, that field set will display. I can change it on the fly with a quick right click on the left hand side, or you can actually set a different field set for an active channel so that every time you bring up the active channel, the field set that you find most useful will display for you. Now in our second part of the example, we'll go ahead and talk about the filters. Now over on the left hand side, same Demo Live active channel, I've got all the details displayed of all the different events that I fed in. Uh, one of the things you can see down towards the bottom in the center is maybe I'm doing some testing with some ISO related uh, event context. Doesn't have a whole lot of detail in there. I can see the name is make the regulation compliant. So maybe when I'm doing testing, for example, and feeding events in, I might want to filter some of those things out. Um, and so first of all, over in the upper left hand side, just like we did field sets, I'm going to go ahead and click on filters. And in here, we've got a navigation panel that's full of different filters that are available across all the different kinds of products, assets, event types, for example, host information, for example, filter out events where the attacker criticality is low or filter in where attacker criticality is high. So there's a whole set of predefined filters that we've got available just by clicking that filter drop-down panel and they can all be displayed and used. Over on the right-hand side for the details about that demo live active channel, I'm gonna click on the filter tab on the right 
And what you'll see on the right-hand side, I'll go ahead and shrink this down just a touch, is that active channel has a filter as well, where we're looking for, in particular, non-arc site internal events, and then different attributes like the generator URI or the file type, for example. Now, in the one example we were just talking about, where I've got this make regulation compliant, if that was something I didn't want, I can very easily on the right-hand side, where it says and, I'm going to right-click on it, add a new condition for my filter. I'm going to look for, for example, the name. So I'm going to scroll down, and all the different fields are all things that can be filtered upon, anded or nested filters as well. I'm going to click on name, and then where it says equals, I'm going to go ahead and click on the little equal sign and change it to not equal. So, so you have options for the kinds of filtering you want to do. Uh, equal, not equal to, contain, starts with, ends with. I'll say not equal, and I'll go ahead and put make the regulation compliant. Now I could, for example, copy paste. In this case, I'll just go ahead and type it. So I don't want where the name not equal to regulation compliant. I'll click on apply. When you update a filter on the fly like this, it will go ahead and recollect the events that match the criteria that you've set. And now I've filtered out those make it the regulation compliant details. So these kinds of filters can be done on the fly as you're looking at an active channel that you've created yourself. Uh, there's a whole list of filters that are pre-created as part of, for example, the ArcSight Activate framework. Uh, so they're all available to decide what you want in or out and what you want to have displayed across your ArcSight information. So put it all together, you've got the ESM field sets and filters. The field sets help you determine which sort of columns of data you want to display, and you can decide which ones display and in what order they display. Filtering helps you decide what data is in or out of the display, or in other areas like reports and rules and, for example, other filters. If you'd like more information about ESM field sets and filters, uh, hop on out and take a look at the ArcSight ESM console and command center guides. Uh, you can go out to the Microfocus community, uh, formerly known as Protect724. Uh, you click on a link that brings you right to ArcSight, click on ArcSight documentation, and full details are available. Thank you very much.